Today I'm going to be going through the carburetor on a 2001 Prairie 400. This is Kawasaki Prairie and what I've got here is two carburetors. This is a Kian. It's got a CVK at the top of it. Carburetor. This is an OEM genuine Kawasaki carburetor that came off of the machine. What I've got here is an aftermarket carburetor probably going to be in the lines of $35 off of eBay, Caltrek, made in China, CA-153 carburetor. And I just wanted to show you a couple of the differences between the two, actually a list of differences between the two. And I just want to give you an idea of what the differences are. So when you go and get ready to spend possibly a couple hundred dollars for the OEM carburetor, uh, a fraction of the price on an aftermarket unbranded carburetor. I just want to show you what you're getting here. I'm going to try to give you the unbiased opinion. Um, if you want my opinion on these carburetors, um, ask me down below and I'll give you my opinion. But I just want to give you an idea of what the differences are so you can make your own opinion whether you want to go spend the money on the OEM carburetor or save $100 and buy an, after, uh, buy an aftermarket unbranded carburetor. So gonna go through these carburetors now and just give you all the differences. I'll let you compare them in my video. Uh, click pause at any time and you can, you can check out, make sure, I'm, make sure I'm showing you the differences and I want you to be able to see those in this video. out of the box Caltrick sends this uh, let's see from their warehouse in Al Arletta California and this is the way that it comes it's got bubble wrap around it here I'm pulling that out of the bubble wrap here is the carburetor nice and shiny just looking at it real closely here um, not a ton of differences right off hand uh, that you're going to be able to see. Obviously, it's not going to have the Kian uh, number or the Kian letters scratched in it here or engraved up here. This doesn't look like it's got any letters anywhere on it. No model number or anything here. On the box, you guys said this earlier, it's got a CA153. It's got a SKU number here, a barcode. Um, that I don't think represents any sort of model number except for that CA-153. Setting them here and looking at the two of them, some differences that I see. One of them is this port here. We've actually got a brass fitting that sticks up. This will, this will be the air box side. This does not have, this has a port here, but it does not have the brass fitting sticking up. So there's a difference there. Um, the other difference I see here, all of these, there's brass fittings in here, which is good. There's brass fittings in the OEM carburetor over here, but these are, seem a lot closer. These are a lot closer uh, to the surface. So these ports and these fittings sit back into the carburetor farther. These ports here sit really close up. And on all three of those, that's the case. I don't know if you saw that there. This is the fitting that I was talking about it missing. So that's the first differences I see there. Plungers down here look the same. Idle screws look to be uh, close to the same length. This one's a little bit longer, which probably isn't going to cause any problems, obviously, because this, this one here was long enough. It did the trick. So not a lot of differences there. Flipping these over now. Uh, I'll put these over on the side here. Again, the CVK written up here. You can see Kian behind the throttle housing here. So that's the difference there. Phillips screw to remove this one. It's going to be the same over here, which we've done that when we removed it off the machine. Pull that cover. Those covers look the same. They feel the same. This one might even actually be a little bit heavier. Those covers are off. Inside here, 
This has got a silver color to it, which isn't a big difference there. This is kind of a gold color. Both of those feel about the same. On the back side here, the difference that I see is these screws stick out. So when you've got full throttle just like that, your air is a little more restricted here with this one because of that screw and that plate stick out farther than the screw and the plate on this one. Wide open throttle here, it's gonna be a lot more of a smooth, air is gonna flow through there without being constricted by these screws here. Which I don't know if you're if you're talking, you know, performance wise, if this was a sport quad, you're drag racing it, something like that, that would make a difference. This one here probably isn't gonna make a huge difference. I'm gonna flip these up here. I'm gonna pull both of these bowls off so we can see what's underneath there. I'm gonna start with the OEM one. Phillips screwdriver here, four Phillips screws. Four Phillips screws are loosened. I'm gonna lift this bowl off here. And set this aside. This is the OEM one. I'm going to move these screws. OEM is going to be on the right hand, my right hand side here. I'm going to set that down. I'm going to pull the four screws off of the unbranded carburetor. Have these screws pulled off here. Flip this bowl over. Push these screws aside. Here's the bowls here. Setting the carburetors aside now. We got both the bowls here. And you can see not a ton of differences. The one thing I'm noticing, uh, you've got a plate here on the OEM carburetor. On this one, it's completely opened. Now, not a big difference as far as performance and how it's gonna work. The only thing I like about this one better is this plate here. A lot of times debris and stuff will get stuck down into this bottom bowl area and this plate here is gonna keep it from working itself up and working itself into those jets on the carburetor. So any sort of sand, anything that gets into your uh, bowl here is probably gonna work itself down into the bottom of this bowl and sit down in there, kind of get caught up in there. You can see this one's completely opened and any kind of debris, sand, or pieces of rubber, or anything coming off your fuel hose is gonna get sucked up into your carburetor. Now, if you've got a completely clean carburetor all of the time, no issues there, you know, that's that's doesn't isn't gonna make a difference whether it's got a plate on there or not. So just, just another difference I see. We also have the O-ring here. Those look like they're uh, universal. Gonna be able to switch those back and forth. Let me see here if I put this bottom bowl on this OEM carburetor. So put this aftermarket bowl on this OEM carburetor. Not a lot of movement there. So you can actually switch these bottom bowls out if you needed to. Keep these straight here. The other, the other thing I noticed on this bottom bowl here is these screws. This is an Allen head. This is a Phillips. So OEM one's got an Allen head for a drain. The unbranded has a Phillips screw. Not a big difference in those. Next, I'm gonna pull this uh, needle here, this pin that holds the float on. I'm gonna push that through there. Doesn't really matter which direction it goes. Got that pin pulled off there. There is the float along with the needle. There's the needle there. Inspect that needle. These are adjustable. I've shown you that on other car rebuild videos. I'm gonna pull the bowl off or the float off of this unbranded carburetor. Floats look like they're similar. Trying to see differences there. I don't see differences. You wanna make sure that these floats are at the pro have the proper setting. So check your manual for those. Looking at these here. Okay, there's a brass fitting. Here's your coolant vent line, or excuse me, coolant, kind of a T line. And you can just pull those out. There it is there. Plastic with some brass fitting up top there. 
On the unbranded one, same thing pulled up there. There's the difference there. I'm not seeing any differences on there. Okay, a difference I'm seeing here is the unbranded carburetor. This brass fitting sticks out a little bit. This one is pushed up in there a little bit. And I don't know 100% why that would be or what that difference that would make. I don't think probably anything, but there's a difference there in those carburetors. This OEM one, it looks like the idle screw has got threads starting almost right away here. These threads are starting about, a, about a 3 eighths of an inch down in two here. Now I've pulled these out, I'll do it again, but I didn't see any difference on the air fuel screw here. Between the two, they both have washers, springs, and O-rings. And as far as the length goes, they are the same. Actually, these screws look identical. So there's the screw of the OEM. There's the screw of the aftermarket. Like I said, same size, same difference there. And I'm just going to dump these parts out now at this point so I don't spill them all over. Move that aside. Move that aside. Okay. Jets. Now this is one of the biggest difference that I saw here. OEM jets here are marked. It's going to either be on the side of the jet here or on top. This unbranded carburetor, the jets aren't marked. So you'll have to measure those if you want to change out jets or if you need to change for any reason. Um, you'll have to just order the ones that you need or measure the ones that you have to make sure that they're correct. Main jet here on this one is going to be the largest ported jet of the three. You've got your secondary main right here. And then we've got your pilot jet clear down in here. Another difference that I saw on your aftermarket unbranded carburetor is the secondary main jet was enormous on this one. Way bigger than it needed to be. So right off the bat, you're gonna have to change out that, uh, change out those jets. And what I would do if you're ordering one of these unbranded Carburetor, just order all new jets. The jets are interchangeable. And uh, you want to make sure that you have the correct jet in there. And you can't do that if you don't know the size of it. So the other thing, your, your other main jet. So your secondary main, which is here. Your main jet, which is here. Both of these jets are huge compared to what the stock one should be. So you're gonna have way more air, or excuse me, way more fuel dumped into your engine uh, right out of the box with this um, aftermarket carburetor. So keep that in mind, that's something you may wanna switch out right away on, it was something you will wanna switch out or you're gonna have some serious engine problems um, with your aftermarket carburetor here. Okay, I'm gonna pull the, the main jet came out with my main jet holder on this aftermarket one. So I'm gonna take my, my eight millimeter wrench and unscrew that. There's our, there's our main jet holder there for the OEM one. Another difference is I'm seeing here, and this is a big one. This would probably be just as big of a difference and make just as big of a difference when it comes to running is our needle. Our needle is probably a sixteenth of an inch down right here. This you've got probably close to three eighths of an inch is our needle down. That with the the large, that with the enormous main jet on this one is gonna cause some serious issues right off the bat. So this is set to where it needs to be from the factory and you can swap these needles out and I'll show you how to do that uh, a little bit later on in this video. But what happens here is you've got your main jet. Make sure I grab the right one there. You have your main jet here with your main jet holder. 
you've got your needle and your slide here. So when you give it gas, I'm gonna try to hold this up. When you give it gas, this needle comes up. So it pulls up out of that main jet holder. So you're right now, you've got full fuel, full air flowing through this carburetor. Okay, if this needle is down half throttle, so say it's here, on this unbranded carburetor, you are, because your needle sits so much farther up, you're, you, with half throttle on this unbranded carburetor, you're actually allowing full fuel and large amounts of fuel because that main jet is not restricted as much as it needs to be. Think of you, if you give it max throttle, you're gonna be dumping way too much fuel into that cylinder and that fuel is going to come sooner um, because of that needle being uh, setting differently in this tube here. So if that makes sense, if, if it doesn't, definitely ask questions in the comments below. But with that needle and that main jet being the wrong size or uh, the wrong setting, you're going to have you're going to have a completely different running four wheeler. So something to think about there. And I'll show you that a little bit more when I get up into the top end of this carburetor. But that's going to be, I would say, probably your biggest difference so far is where that needle sits. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it there and if you can compare the two. But there's a huge difference in where that needle is in this tube here. So keep that in mind. Another difference I see here in this carburetor, and this is another big one here, you've got your primer pump here, and that's got an orifice here. That goes up into this area here, which runs a line up into your carburetor up here. Now, this actually has a jet. Your OEM carburetor actually has a jet in here. The unbranded carburetor has nothing. It's completely free and clear, runs right up into your main carburetor area, which is where I showed you at first, you have a brass fitting here, and you don't have a brass fitting here. So not only is there not a brass fitting up top here, but down below here, there's no restrictor, no jet that's gonna restrict that fuel from being pushed up in there. So you hit that primer pump and push it, that fuel is going to unload into your intake here on your aftermarket carburetor and on your genuine Kawasaki carburetor, that fuel is restricted and your engine will get the amount of fuel that it needs uh, to properly run your four-wheeler. So this is just gonna be in the case of using this primer plug um, but and from time to time you will have to do that and you don't want to be shoving an incredible amount of fuel up through that port there if you don't need to. That's just another, another difference I saw there. I'm going to flip this carburetor over now. I'm going to pull the top cap off of here. We're going to check out the differences on top of the, your carburetor. So four Phillips screws again on both of these. Four screws are off here. I'm going to take and pull this cap. There's your cap there, there's your spring. I'm gonna push our slide up out of here, being careful this diaphragm doesn't rip or isn't sticking. I'm gonna set that one aside and I'm gonna do the same to this unbranded carburetor. Four screws are off. There's your top cap. Springs look similar. They feel pretty close to the same. Maybe this one's a little bit more flimsy. If it was a lot more flimsy or a lot less or a lot more coils, I would say that's something we need to look at. There are more coils on this one. Um, might be a couple more coils. So not a lot of difference there, but could potentially throttle up slower or come back down a little bit slower, which aren't, which isn't a great thing. Push your diaphragm up out of there, your slide there comes with your needle. 
Now I'm going to compare the two this way. And without having that spring in there, I can't put any pressure on there. Okay, there's our difference there. It's where our needle sits in our carburetor or our in our slide there. So this one you can see doesn't reach this slide on this one. So this needle appears to be longer. Now the other trick will be these needles should have some writing on there to tell you the length. And here is your OEM one. Let's see if it does. It does have writing on there. It's hard to read. It's right there underneath of uh, your stop here. And then we'll take our aftermarket one, our unbranded carburetor, dump the clip out there, dump the needle out. And no writing on it. So, okay, I'm seeing the difference here. There is a difference in length on these needles, but this is, it's got a, uh, a thicker, um, thicker post, which actually shouldn't matter because they'll both sit down here. This needle is just slightly longer. Now, I, I'm not 100% sure that that'll make up the, I don't know, an eighth of an inch gap in between where they both sat in the actual carburetor. I still think that this piece here where the needle sits in to on this slide is going to be thicker and we're going to have to grab some measuring tools to measure that because that will be important because if those are completely different sizes here, right here, then it doesn't really matter um, what if we, it doesn't really matter, we can't use then our stock uh, needle to just put in here it may not be as long as we need it anyway. But I'm just gonna hold these two up just to see if I can tell a difference. I'm not gonna be able to see a size difference between the two. There's a difference in how those needles sit on there. This one's actually got a wider hole. I don't know if that'll matter. If, if this one had a wider hole, I think it would matter. Weight-wise, these are pretty close to the same. They, they are different. There are some slight differences here. This one actually has a groove. Looks like a groove on top. Looks like a washer sits on top of here, but there's no washer. And this one... You can pretty easily see what it looks like down in there. So there are some differences there for sure. On top here, this is a black plastic. This is a white plastic. Size-wise, they're about the same. They look a little different, but this way, both of these are the same. They look the same right there. This side here. I don't know how much this hole, this indention here makes a difference, but this one is larger. It's got a deeper hole and then it's a lot larger this way. Same way with up here. These holes or indentions are larger than these here. So not a, not a ton of huge differences, but there are a handful of them that will make a big difference in how your four-wheeler runs. Again, I don't want to tell you which way to go here with your four-wheeler and what what uh, what you need to do, but I would I would definitely look at those differences and see if that's something you want to risk. See if it's something that you want to take the time to um, put new parts in your unbranded carburetor, or if you want to take the time and money to rebuild your genuine Kawasaki carburetor. As far as mounting it up and installing it on these particular carburetors, they are similar similar enough to where you would be able just to throw these on. It would fit just right. Some of the unbranded carburetors, you actually have to do some, some fitment uh, differences. There are some fitment differences, and you've actually got to use different size clamps. You've got to use some rubber bushings 
and spacers so that your intake here will match up, your, your outlet here going to your motor will match up. So that, that doesn't seem to be the case on these Kawasaki Prairie ones, but just think about some of those differences there. Now I will tell you that I would never put an unbranded carburetor on any of my four wheelers. If you bring it to me and say you found a carburetor online for $35, I will throw that carburetor away and rebuild your old one. That's me. What I don't want to do is put a carburetor on there that is less quality and orifices aren't drilled the same or how they should be. You're restricting fuel in areas you don't want to restrict fuel or you are allowing way too much fuel in an area where you shouldn't be letting that much fuel through. So saving $100 on a carburetor is not worth it for me for destroying the engine on a four-wheeler uh, by uh, running a four-wheeler rich or running a four-wheeler lean. I would go find an OEM carburetor that needs rebuilt and rebuild it myself or um, take it to a dealership and have it rebuilt if I didn't have the knowledge to do that. Because for one, you already have this carburetor. If it needs rebuild, it's gonna cost you $100 to do that. Or you go spend $35 on a knockoff carburetor and you will potentially have to pull that off and rebuild an OEM carburetor in the end. Or you're gonna spend countless hours trying to figure out why your four-wheeler isn't running right after you put the knockoff carburetor on your four-wheeler. So I'm sure there are carburetors out there that are reasonably priced that potentially you know, might work on your four-wheeler. I'm just not willing to take that risk and uh, potentially end up having to put a lot more money into the four-wheeler because I wanted to save a couple bucks on the carburetor. So that's my insight. Uh, there's going to be a lot of you that disagree with that. I just wanted to give you uh, my ideas and let you think about those for yourself. If this video has been helpful, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Check our channel out. There's going to be a handful of other videos on the Kawasaki Prairie, handful of other videos on some of the aftermarket parts that you can put on your machine and I like to do reviews on whether those parts are quality, make sure they're in good condition, uh, make sure they fit your machine properly. Uh, I just don't want people to get stuck with a bunch of knockoff parts that uh, don't work properly.